and it's just like a hypnotic command because they're like pushing on a button in you. Hey guys, so this is an unreleased video that I filmed this summer regarding how you get indoctrinated into the Church of Scientology. If you like this video and you want more story time videos such as this, please click the subscribe button down below. Also go check out my merchandise at suppressivemerchandise.com as well as go to patreon.com slash stevenmango if you'd like to leave a monthly pledge to my channel. Mangotology. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Mangotology. So for today's video I wanted to discuss with you how smart people can get sucked into the Church of Scientology as well as what is the allure of Scientology. What would get people such as myself into Scientology in the first place as well as why we even got in when there's the internet and other different things out there to warn us and why people wouldn't listen to the internet when you're involved in Scientology. So I have all of that here for you today in this video. So I get asked this question a lot and a lot of the times in the comment section on my videos I get a lot of people that are very critical. They're like, hey this kid's an idiot, he's a sheep, and why wouldn't he just read the internet? And why would anyone even believe in this nonsense to begin with? So I think from someone's perspective as someone who doesn't really understand or doesn't really know about the mind control aspects of Scientology, it's very easy just to say, yeah, you know, the kid's an idiot. Yes, for someone who doesn't really know, of course, you can just look at me and just say, I'm an idiot. But you have to really think. Most people aren't just willing just to hand over a credit card or sign a billion-year contract unless there's something good that ropes you in and gets you involved in the first place. What Scientology really does work on is trying to find your ruin. What is that one thing in your life that if you could change or fix would then change you as a person and make you happier and healthier or whatever it is. Like everyone has that one little thing in their life that's holding them back from their full potential. So they really prey on that. And at first, it starts off as life improvement. Here are a few of the $50 basic introductory life improvement courses that Scientology offers to new people, including personal values and integrity, knowing who you can trust, overcoming the ups and downs of life, and Scientology's tools for overcoming financial stress. Who doesn't want a little bit of life improvement? Who doesn't want to be able to feel like they're smarter, can increase their IQ, better financers, or with their marriage or relationships? It starts off very easily. So picture this at first. You may go on a tour, you may have a friend or family member that's a Scientologist, and you go in and everyone is so nice, everyone's complimenting you, you're being love bombed essentially. Love bombing is an attempt to influence a person by demonstrations of attention and affection. You are the most special person where if you talk, they're really intently listening, they're going to ask you questions, they believe in you, and maybe not all of that on the very first moment of walking in the door, but they do really work on making you feel like you're the only person in the room, that you are the most intelligent being to find this group in Scientology and you're going to get the help that you need. And the love bombing isn't cheesy. It doesn't feel inauthentic. They really do act like they care about you. They ask you a lot of detailed questions about yourself, your profession, about all different things in your life where you really feel like they're taking a personal interest in you. So you end up doing this tour of the group and then eventually they're starting to work on like what is that thing in your life that's really holding you back. So say it's your marriage. It's an easy one to kind of probably sell someone on if their marriage isn't working out. Well, we have this course. It's for $50. It's going to help you improve your marriage. I mean, think about it. Marriage counseling normally costs, what, $200 an hour? And, you know, a one-hour session once a week for, you know, a couple of weeks, is that really going to change anything necessarily when you can take this course and learn tools right away? The same things that you'd be learning in counseling, but only more effective. And these tools are what you're going to be able to work on with your partner or your spouse to be able to grow in your relationship. Where marriage counseling is just two people fighting and bickering and it eventually takes a very long time to get to what the point is. But they're saying where you can apply these tools every single day in your relationship and help it grow and be more based on love than the fighting in the past. Like we're going to work on here forward. So when you say, wow, that sounds like a really great idea. I'm going to sign up with my boyfriend or something. So you sign up for that course. And I'm just showing you how like you slowly get sucked in it, what the allure is. Specifically with the Celebrity Center for me, I was, my biggest thing was, you know, I was shy. I didn't have a lot of confidence. I had depression, other things that were holding me back. And I wasn't getting success what I wanted in my acting career, but hey, if you learn these different communication drills, for example, you're going to be able to go into an audition and nail it because 
acting is all about communication. So if you're able to go into a room and you're able to deliver communication very effectively and you're able to get it and like impinge that communication like into the other person and get like your message heard, then that's all you need to do as an actor, you know? You're gonna be able to learn how to make postulates and you're gonna be able to be able to almost be like a superhuman in Scientology, you know, and being able to control casting directors and all these different things. And there's a story about John Travolta and he had, you know, an audition at, you know, whatever, Paramount Studios and they all at the Scientology Celebrity Center pointed in the direction and they made a postulate and he said, I'm going to book the role on whatever the TV show was, his big first TV show or movie. And that's what kind of catapulted him, so they say. So these different stories that you hear and then you're surrounded by all these like-minded people. So say like you're an outcast. It definitely works on normal people, but if you're an outcast, like it's an easy sell in Scientology because like me, I didn't have any friends or family members inside Scientology or just in general, like even in LA, I was by myself at the time. I was an 18 year old kid and I didn't know who I was. So here is a very easy sell where all these other people are actors. They're all misunderstood as well. They're all trying and trying to get to the same purpose. And it may not just be for acting at Celebrity Center. You may be at another org and there's business people or there's people affiliated with other different things. And then you start forming like these bonds with these people that are all going to the same mission because now these are people that are trying to like help the planet. So eventually when you get more involved, it turns into where you think you're able to help. Now, you don't know as a Scientologist, unless you're actually on the disaster site, for example, what's actually happening or like what Scientology is doing. So for me, I may not know that, you know, they handed out 10 booklets at Hurricane Katrina or something like that, but they're gonna have this very glossy, pretty video that makes it seem like, wow, like they're, you know, rescuing people from the homes and the flooding and all these different things. And then they're gonna go over here to this other area and they're gonna be able to do all this other stuff to be able to make a difference in our world and they're helping with the literacy rate and they're helping to get people off the drugs and you're seeing all these different glossy videos that they're promoting and you actually think that they're helping the world and the only solution is Scientology. The real effect, like there's other groups trying to do things but if you really want to make change in this world and to clear the planet and all this stuff, you have to be say contributing to the IAS, which is the International Association of Scientologists that safeguards the technology, as well as to the volunteer ministers. They do these like touch assists, feel my finger, thank you, feel my finger, thank you. They to put yourself more in communication with the body so you feel like they're healing people and doing like this alternative medicine almost. And there's all these different things that kind of can hook you into as a big believer, especially if it works for you. If you feel like the communication drills start you know, improving your communication with others or you feel less shy and that's going to hook you in and think like there's something more on the next level because if the early stages give you something then why wouldn't the future levels that they're promising you to be cause over matter, energy, space, and time? But it's very slow, remember, like you're not just like this person's an SP and we're cutting off from the world and Scientology is like woohoo, I'm jumping on Oprah's couch. It's not like that right away. Remember, they work on you individually. This is not like a church session where you're going to the Catholic church. They're individually having a program for Steve Mango, you know? Okay, he's been in for three months right now. We can expose him to this much of the church. And then slowly, 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 you get involved into bigger concepts and ideas, and you get more deeper and deeper involved. They may start off by telling you about antisocial personalities. Like in my experience on course, they would say, well, aren't there people that may be holding you back from being successful or might not believe in you as an actor? And then therefore, like you start doubting yourself. And then that's why you start not really feeling good about yourself. Like say in an audition, for example. And I say, yeah, like my mom is like that. And they'll say, exactly. Could you imagine if, you know, your mom wasn't giving you those thoughts or impinging all these negative unwanted emotions and things into you and you're like, yeah, like that's so true. And they say, okay, just keep that in mind, right? Later on, it goes on and on. Then it gets to the point of like, well, what does your mother have to say about Scientology? Oh, she's against it, see? Just like how she's about your acting career. She's a suppressive person. If you disconnect from her and you're no longer associated with her, could you imagine how much less drama and stress and other things would be in your life? And remember, she's just your mother this lifetime. You live lifetime after lifetime. So in another lifetime, you're gonna have another mom. And the lifetime before this, you had another parent, like this is short, like you live billions and trillions of years. So what's 80 years in the grand scheme of like thousands and thousands of years, like you're gonna be living for eternity. So just cause you don't talk to your mom this lifetime doesn't mean that you're gonna, you know, really, it's not a big deal cause you're gonna get a new mom next lifetime. It's like, we have to stop putting so much 
like emotion on other human connections sometimes because they're toxic, they may say, right? But that comes later. So you start, you know, putting Scientologists like say like me into my company because, well, don't you want people who are really, you know, ethical, who aren't gonna steal from the cash drawer and you want people who are really um, motivated and apply LRH tools to be able to boom production. You don't want some lazy person from Craigslist. So then you start saying, okay, I'll hire some Scientologist into my company. And then you get a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and you start, you know, maybe you move in with a Scientologist or you start dating one. Well, in my case, I was gay, so that wasn't an issue because I was in the closet and that's a whole other story down on my channel below. But you start slowly, slowly integrating yourself into this world. And it's not something that just happens in like a few weeks or a few months. It takes years and years and years to the point where, for me, it was a couple years to the point where I felt like I had no escape. I basically invested everything I had into this group. They were taking money from me, but I still found ways to justify it because the main thing is about help. You think you're helping others, not only just yourself. Like, yes, like there's personal benefit where I felt like being on course and studying these books, like L. Ron Hubbard becomes source. So in the early stages, like, yeah, that seems true or that's kind of a cool concept. Then all of a sudden, L. Ron Hubbard becomes this god where he's source of everything. So you want to learn how to, you know, feed your baby. There's a formula in a reference. Like I always use that one just as an example because it just seems like something that like, why would L. Ron Hubbard know about feeding a baby or something like that? Or like L. Ron Hubbard has to say about you know, time or about transportation or about performing or about music or about like any real subject, there's something L. Ron Hubbard said about it. So you're gonna look at the reference. So then your life becomes even more sheltered because you're not reading the news or looking at any of the media because again, they're all being funded and contributed to by psychiatry. They have messages on these TV shows that are meant to implant you. So you may be watching Modern Family and ABC also has affiliation with Disney that has affiliation to whoever the CEO is, who is, you know, buying ads or whatever from say Eli Lilly or Pfizer, one of these psych, you know, psych drug companies. So then you're watching Modern Family and then there's an ad that says, are you depressed? Do you feel suicidal? Take Latuga. And then you're like, wow, like maybe I should take Latuga, for example. And it's just like a hypnotic command because they're like pushing on a button in you. And then you learn like, well, I don't really need to watch TV. Like it's just counterproductive. It's counterintuitive to my goals of survival in Scientology. Like I should be studying and being on course in Scientology because this is the way we're going to help mankind. Like just being a vegetable on the couch watching the news, which has negative things to say about our group that's actually doing really good things for society. We have to be able to you know, get off of our ass and start being on course more, becoming an auditor and start receiving training. So that's kind of like the mindset that they get you in. So you're not reading the news because you think all the news is fake news, just like Donald Trump, and all this. that's fake news, that's fake news. Same thing Scientology would say, oh, that's just the media, they have, you know, other interests and they're being funded by these big drug companies, for example, and that's kind of like the mindset. All right guys, there's been a lot of noise outside for whatever reason today, so I'm gonna try to talk over the noise and finish kind of my story. So then, you start receiving auditing. So when you're receiving auditing, you are basically turning over your control over to the auditor and they're asking you very pointed questions. It involves a lot of hypnosis, especially with like training routine drills. When you're staring at someone's eyes for two and a half hours, it kind of wears you down. But when you start realizing things in auditing, for example, and you start like, wow, like that's actually really true. And they say your needle is floating. You feel like you're like lifted, like like the baggage has been taken off of your shoulder. And you're like, oh my God, that's so powerful. And then you go to the examiner and they say, your needle is floating, thank you. Like you actually achieved the state of, you know, being able to communicate with anyone on any subject, for example. So it gets to this point where you start, you start actually feeling like someone's acknowledging that it's working for you, even though it may not necessarily always be working all the time. Like maybe in the early stages it works and later on when you start getting onto other levels, everyone has their own like personal experience with that, right? But you know, in my case, you know, anytime I was on the cans, it was really a powerful psychological experience. I mean, not that I felt like I was getting superpowers on every single level, but I honestly felt like when it did work in certain areas of auditing, for example, or on course, that everything else had to be true. And if I was having mistakes, it's my fault. So later on, when you start having doubts or someone says, did you watch a Leah Remini show? Or did you see the news or any of that sort of stuff? You start saying, well, why am I gonna believe them when it's actually working for me? Or I'm applying it and I'm having a good experience. Why would I believe Leah Remini, for example, some celebrity 
when here I am winning. She just probably is out ethics or, you know, you start like justifying reasoning things. Not yeah, there might have been friends or other people that told me like, hey, like this is a cult, like this, like stay away. But for me, I'm winning. And these people are just like those negative SPs that are trying to take me down because here it is, it's working for me. And I'm seeing that it's helping people. So it's like this big mind trap where later on you start seeing like, hey, it's not working. Well, it's something wrong with you because it's working for all your friends, all your family members, all your coworkers. And you start like looking into yourself. That's the thing, it's never them. It's always you, you're always doing something wrong. You know? That's the thing, you start turning it into like, you're the problem because it did work at one point and am I connected to a suppressive person? And later on when you get so deeply involved, you start feeling that, you know, Scientology is, completely the way of the world. I mean, later on you'll come to the point of learning it was all a con, but when you're kind of questioning, you're kind of saying, well, of course it's right, well, why isn't it working for me? Or why are they taking money from me? But it must be for the greatest good. Like, even if they take money off of my credit cards without my permission, it must be because it's helping someone. And I'm not gonna question the church because they're like, in, you know, the most ethical beings on the planet in the C organization. And then they try to get you to join the C org and sign a billionaire contract because why wouldn't you want to? Like, why would you want to be an actor? Why would you want to be someone who's, you know, playing someone who's downtown or being on a TV show that portrays a gay person? Why wouldn't you want to like act in our training films and being able to spread and promote Dianetics to millions of people all over the world and use your talent for good instead of just, you know, being on a TV network that's being funded by psychiatry? And they play all these mental mind games. And when you're very vulnerable, not even just vulnerable like once you're involved and invested like it starts with the beginning courses you start having success you meet a lot of people and then you start getting some auditing and you start seeing these videos and going to these events where it's like a big group of everyone is all on the same team and you're watching these videos of how Scientology is changing the world and how they're defeating psychiatry and doing all these different things and you're like wow like this is so amazing and then when you are asked for donations for tens of thousands of dollars or for you know building a new ideal or or doing these different things you don't usually question it you're not going to question it because you just think like oh it's command intention it's what david miscavige wants us to do and what upper church officials want because this is going to be how we're going to spread our message and our and you know deliver dianetics and scientology to the rest of the world and that's what felt like the most important thing so you can see that if there's anything in your life, and I'm telling you, even if you're watching this, you're like, there's nothing that could get me in Scientology. We all have some flaws or faults, or our relationships are not all perfect, or we're struggling at work, or something is going on in your life where if it was the right moment, I'm not saying that Scientology, like they couldn't probably get me now, but they could get me then. Even when you are in a happy place, they can still say, well, we need to make you more powerful. We need to, you can definitely boom your business even more. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be that you're in like, you know, the pits of hell, like shooting up heroin or something. You can still be a very capable person and still get sucked in or meet someone. Like you see them on Hollywood Boulevard, they reach out their hand, they say, hi, how are you? Like, I have this really great film I wanna show you, whatever. And like, so where are you from? Oh, I'm also from, you know, Boston. Oh, cool. What part? And then you start relating to these people and you see like, they're really like nice people. So like there's all this illusion and those same nice people are the ones that are gonna, you know, cut you off and, you know, deem you a suppressive person and then blackmail you and send private investigators on you later. But in the meantime, you know, they're gonna act like they're your best friend. And it's like this relationship concept mixed with like personal self-help mixed with regular mind control. Like anyone staring at someone's eyes for two and a half hours is gonna start feeling high. And if you're like, wow, I'm having a win. I'm floating out of my body when really you're just going crazy from staring at someone or doing these drills. And and it's a very set process that every single person goes through and it's individual like i said your time of going deeper and deeper into the fold and exposing the layers of the onion could be faster or slower just depending on how you respond and remember now there's ethics as well so say for example you have doubts who's going to put you on an ethics program that's going to start brainwashing you to feel like, oh, I'm the problem, it's not the group. I have crimes against Scientology, for example. So whether, or you don't understand something in the text, we're gonna look up every single word. So I may personally not believe something or may not find something true because I'm gay and they're saying homosexuals are deviant criminals. But they'll make me look up every single word in Dianetics, every single word in the chapter, the prior chapter, whatever, to find out where I have a misunderstood word. And any person in the world, I would say, who reads, any book. If you say, what is the definition of something? If you just hesitate for a second, like, I don't know what the definition of 
the word the is. Even though I say the word the every day, or an, or to, you have to kind of think about it for a second and say, well, that's what's giving you the hang up. That's where your confusion lies. And they do a clay demo, or you're going to demo out little blocks. It's not because you don't agree, it's just because you don't understand the concept. So even in Scientology, when things seem a little bizarre, you know, or now we're talking about abortions with coat hangers and you know, that's why, you know, you may be having issues up to this day because it's in your reactive mind, even though you weren't even born at the time and you were a fetus and you're reading all this crazy stuff, but then they're gonna make you word clear it, they'll send you to ethics, they will have other people reinforce the ideas, or they'll run Dianetics on you and all you know, they may say for example, like, hey, like you know like how you're having that problem and you were so depressed for weeks and weeks. Well, now look at you, look how bright you are. And then it starts like reinforcing it, like, yeah, like it actually worked I think, you know, it feels like it worked or I had some form of a realization or what they call a cognition and that kind of brainwashes you in a way because then you start feeling that yeah, the things that are not true to me are just some things I can't really understand yet or I'm not at that point yet. So there's all these different levels guys, as you can see, to the way that you use your mind to trick yourself and the indoctrination process. And it's very slow, it's very steady, but just like me, I got to a point where my acting career wasn't doing too well and they're like, well, do you want to join the Sea Org now and sign a billionaire contract and work for us? And you know, you're here all the time and you know, you want to, you know, be able to use your talents as an actor and then you'll be able to also get people into Scientology because you can only get in a couple people that you know now like friends and family but you can actually work on getting in the population of the world Los Angeles whatever and you could be responsible for helping to bring someone into our faith or you could go to disaster sites and you could help real people it's all about this idea of help and don't you want to help and you know if you're a good natured person like you may not even get into Scientology based on your ruin you may just think that they're helping people or they're just a group that you know you want to be a part of there's many different ways and steps and i can go into that with more detail with you guys but you know it's just been bothering me when people say like i'm an idiot or others that i know were idiots to get involved in scientology when in reality most of us were just trying to do the right thing by helping others i thought a lot of my money a lot of the times was going to helping kids so even though i couldn't really afford things or afford food you know back in the day sometimes or being able to afford gas for my car i thought i was doing something for people that were homeless or just were not in a good place in their life. So I actually kind of felt good about giving money at times until I realized that it was just David Miscavige just being greedy and the money's not going towards what it's really supposed to. So it's been something on my mind that I've been wanting to talk about, about how people get roped in. So I guess part and parcel, it's an onion. You see the outer layer and then eventually go deeper, deeper, deeper until you get to the very core. And that's where all the corruption and everything that you guys know is not exposed to the general public when you walk in the door and you go on an informational tour. You know, it's something that they slowly get you into. So when you see that sort of stuff, you're already so indoctrinated to believe everything else that you're willing to accept things and things that sometimes you wouldn't even necessarily would have in the beginning that now you're willing to because you're now a Scientology believer. So anyways, guys, sorry to ramble so much. If you like my channel and you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out if you guys subscribe. Um, leave comments. I read all my comments. If you guys have any questions for me that you'd like me to address in the Q&A video, please leave them down in the comment box below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.